Yeah, have you had a chance to talk about the interview this morning? Yes. Oh, okay. We've got lots to discuss. We're going to discuss our social relationship, which is great, between the UK and the United States. We're going to discuss the real opportunities we've got as a trade deal. I can't hear what she's saying. you got to tell me. And of course, we've got to talk about the defense and security conditions. We work really closely together with the US. Uh, the United States is our long standing and richest security and defense partner. And um, we work very closely with the president to do a very good job at NATO in encouraging uh, others to spend uh, part of their commitment. We do. Uh, so uh, we both do this. Uh, but uh, others in our uh, understand the importance of spending uh, 30% commitment in, uh, in NATO. So we've got lots of that. Well, we do. I'm the Prime Minister, and I uh, worked very hard together in NATO, and that was an incredible two days, I think. It's never been more united. People are paying. Uh, we are two of the five that are totally paid up, but uh, others are coming along rapidly, I think. Uh, I think it was a very, very productive two days, and we arrived here last night. We had a dinner where I think we probably never developed a better relationship than last night. We spoke for an hour, for an hour and a half, and it was really something. And uh, today we're talking trade, we're talking military, we just looked at some incredible uh, anti-terrorism things that are being done here in conjunction with the United States. And the relationship is very, very strong. We really had a very good relationship. and. Uh, I think we're going to do a news conference in a little while, so we'll answer your questions then. And right now, we're going to be talking about some other things that are taking place in the Middle East and elsewhere. Okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you just saw the British Prime Minister Theresa May and the U.S. President Donald Trump prior to their bilateral meeting. This was the first time they had a chance to be face-to-face -face since the explosive interview the president gave with the British tabloid The Sun. We had a little bit of a difficult time hearing exactly what they are saying. However, they talked about the fact they've had good meetings over the last few days on NATO and the like. Did not seem to directly address this interview, which is highly controversial and will create problems for the British Prime Minister. Join again by our White House correspondent, Caitlin Collins, who got a little bit more clear of a readout about exactly what those words were. Caitlin. Yeah, John, you hear the president there saying that the relationship between the United States and the UK is very strong. Uh, that's pretty stunning given the interview that the president had last night that dropped that really shocked all of London, criticizing Theresa May, the woman sitting next to him just there uh, over her Brexit plan, saying that she didn't listen to him, that he wouldn't have executed it the way that she has proposed. Uh, so quite stunning to hear him say that the relationship is strong. That is the first time we are seeing those two leaders interact since this stunning interview came out where the president completely undercut Theresa May here on her own turf in London. They are in that meeting as they were uh, getting started their day of meetings where they're going to have a working lunch in a joint press conference. We are told by reporters who were in the room that they did ask the president about those comments he made uh, in that British tabloid. He didn't answer instead telling the pool thank you, uh, essentially a signal for them to leave the room. But they were asked about it and you saw the two of them, their body language as they were sitting there, uh, certainly the what we are told by diplomats here is that really British British officials have been reeling since that interview dropped last night, where not only did the president criticize Theresa May, uh, saying that her plan for Brexit was uh, poorly going to be poorly executed, which is essentially the worst thing you could say about her because she is in a very politically weak state right now. But he also praised her arch rival, Boris Johnson, uh, the foreign secretary who resigned in protest of her Brexit plan. So certainly going to be quite an awkward day for the two of them. But that was the first interaction we had seen of those two leaders since those comments were made and that interview was published late last night, John. All right, Caitlin Collins for us, helping understand what we just saw and heard. What we saw was maybe a little bit of an awkward first meeting since the article came out between the British Prime Minister and the President. Christiane Amapour, the President says this relationship has never been stronger. Is it stronger than it was before that article was published? 
<laughs> look, the relationship, look, the two nations, yes, if you go onto the ground, if you see what they're doing, militaries in NATO and this and that, trade is happening, all the rest of it. But look, the personalities also make a difference. I will say, being a woman myself and having a certain EQ, I noticed that the prime minister was actually trying to make the president feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. He was standing there feeling, I don't know what he was feeling, but he was very rigid. And she was actually looking to him, trying to make him feel comfortable, even though he had made what most people believe is a massive diplomatic faux pas. And, you know, we'll have these talks and we'll see where it goes. It is very critical for this country, mm -hmm. which is why even people who disagree with this president said, we cannot ban him from coming to this country. And, and Matthew, we brought up in jest yesterday when we were just talking, well, will she pull the Hugh Grant moment from Love Actually? We may play that later in the show, but for people who don't remember, in this fictional movie, he plays the British Prime Minister and during a news conference directly confronts a U.S. president. And I think it's become a moment that a lot of people in the United Kingdom feel like they would like to see in reality. For sure, I remember that uh, very distinctly, not least because the movie came out when I was working at Downing <laughs> Street and you had the relationship between Tony Blair and George W. Bush. And of course, there's a desire from certain parts of the public to see you stand up and have that moment. But of course, the question then comes after it, and then what? Like, you can have your moment in a movie, but in real life, diplomacy does go on. And that's the hard part. To be fair to the prime minister, in this situation, whatever you think of Donald Trump personally, there are a number of issues, if you look across the world, where the relationship with the United States is vitally important in terms yeah. of trying to make progress on those. Look at the fact that she is going to be the last world leader to speak to him before he goes off to his meeting with President Putin. That's actually a good position mm -hmm. for the UK to be in, to try and exert some influence in that role it's traditionally played as a bridge between mm -hmm. America and Europe. And you pointed out to me, Matthew, that a majority of British citizens want those two in that room having that meeting right now, even if thousands of people are out protesting on the streets, and even if the president just made that meeting a lot more complicated by this interview he just gave.